It's seldom enough to simply plant a seed without also providing water, nutrients, and care to help it grow to its fullest potential. In 1926, when Frederick Clements first planted the idea for a new kind of garden in Santa Barbara, the seed fell onto fertile ground. There had never been a garden quite like the one envisioned by Dr. Clements, a famous plant ecologist. While other burgeoning botanical gardens were collecting plants from all over the world, Clements was intrigued by the variety of plants native to California. The diversity of climate and topography that make the state unique physically also is reflected in the exceptional richness of its flora and fauna. But the flora has already suffered badly in the vicinity of the large cities, and the rapid extension of motor travel threatens many of the choicest species with extinction. Dr. Clements planted the seed that Santa Barbara was the perfect place for a garden that combined scientific research, along with beautiful and educational displays for the public about the diverse flora of California that encouraged the use of native plants and gardens. It simply had not been done before, which may be why the idea attracted a remarkable group of forward thinkers who worked together to grow Clements' idea into a real garden. Dr. Elmer Bissell, board member of the Museum of Oology, later the Santa Barbara Museum of Natural History, found the property. He contacted his friend, Anna Dorinda Blakesley Bliss, who donated the money to buy the land. The seed had found a home, but the work had just begun. Dr. Bissell and his wife, Irvana, a retired couple in their mid-60s, worked for 10 years without pay and using their own resources to turn the donated plot of Mission Canyon land into the botanical treasure imagined by Clements. Ravana Bissell was a great believer in the beauty and appropriateness of native plants. Its object is to show the beauty of native plants and their adaptability for use in private gardens. And its slogan is back to the soil with native plants, back to California's soil, not with thirsty exotics, but with California's drought-resistant plants, which can serve the state's water supply. The Bissells wanted to be sure that this dream was taken up by the next generation. In 1934, they hired Monsell Van Rensselaer, a young graduate from UC Berkeley with a passion for nature to help them. The Bissells funded Van Rensselaer's position themselves with an endowment of over $25,000 and pledged their beloved home, Stone Acres, to the garden. Van Rensselaer brought new energy and a passion for scientific record-keeping to the young garden. Donations from Anne Bliss's daughter, Mildred Bliss, supported construction of new buildings to house expanded research and education programs. But this was during the Great Depression. The garden was operating at a deficit. This could have been a time to cut back on their growth and ambitions, but its founders and supporters argued the opposite. The garden needed to grow beyond serving as a small memorial garden, and they were confident that the community would support it. In 1939, the Santa Barbara Botanic Garden was incorporated as a private, non-profit institution with its own membership and fundraising ability. Earlier in that decade, local landscape architect Lockwood DeForest Jr. had been designing the garden's plantings. He was joined by Beatrix Ferran, the nation's first female landscape architect, in 1935. Their unique partnership resulted in a stunning merger of formal and naturalistic design elements that made the garden world-renowned. In 1939, they made this joint recommendation for the meadow area. Eliminate Bermuda grass meadow. Replace temporarily with annual and perennial wildflowers. Should this experiment prove successful, it might be desirable to make it a permanent feature. Otherwise, the area could be planted with native strawberries, which would tend to accentuate the view of La Cumbre Peak in the background. The meadow's plantings and design evolved over the decades. With Seed the Future funding, the view first proposed by Ferrand and DeForest will once again greet garden visitors this spring. In 1950, Dr. Catherine Muller brought her scientific knowledge and love of native plants, along with exceptional administrative talents, to transform the garden into the modern institution it is today. For each key element of Dr. Clement's dream, Dr. Muller added a structure that endures today. Education became the garden's gateway to our community. Muller hired the first education director, created a docent program, and reached out to audiences in creative ways, like radio programs, flower shows, and trail guides. Research grants produced internationally significant studies, including the effects of radiation on plants and climate change through tree ring analysis. Conservation efforts expanded with new collections and construction of the garden's first research building with dedicated space for the herbarium. 
Today we follow the same holistic approach to achieve our mission. See the future is not only about a building, it is about establishing a stronger infrastructure to support everything that we do to conserve California native plants. In 1973, Dr. Ralph Philbrick's commitment to island research established the garden's leadership in this critically important ecological system. The garden hosted the first symposium on the biology of the California islands in 1965, a symposium series that continues to this day. In 2016, the symposium will return to Santa Barbara for the first time in more than 50 years. In 1974, garden horticulturist Dara Emery organized a volunteer group known as the Garden Growers to propagate and sell native plants to the public. Today, the Garden Growers Nursery is a thriving resource for home gardeners and professionals, featuring more than 430 kinds of native flora. Seed the Future will help fund improvements to the garden's nursery operations to strengthen our ability to grow and share information on caring for natives with larger audiences. Under Dr. Edward Schneider's leadership, the garden's botanical research program expanded along with other programming. The garden gained accreditation by the American Association of Museums and early membership in the Center for Plant Conservation. In 2009, the garden burned for the second time in its history. The Jesusita fire destroyed more than 70% of the garden and devastated many Santa Barbara communities outside of Mission Canyon. Ever resilient, both the garden and Santa Barbara recovered from the ashes stronger than before. Today, we continue to build upon our rich legacy. Thanks to your support, we're restoring our historic gardens and adding new ones, upgrading our research capacity to address new and ongoing conservation needs, expanding educational and volunteer opportunities for all ages, and increasing nursery operations to support our own needs and those of the community all so that we can ensure the preservation of California's diverse flora for future generations.